Uh, is Kalash temple related to Angkor Wat? I don't know. I mean, I'll be very honest with you. I don't know. This is an interesting point. Is Kalash, uh, you know, the relationship, the relationships among uh, something here and something somewhere else is a very important topic. People are people need to look for symbols, you know, this this or, or the type of stone used or the type of metallurgy. Uh, was there a relationship? They need to find that out. This this kind of thing. Uh, somebody wants to know uh, Gyanendra Singh and Venkat Nalam, also Navneet Koshya and uh, Tharva Pounderik. They want to know uh, where do you get more information from? How do we get involved? Well, you can write to us. Uh, we ca you can volunteer for our conferences next year and that will give you a lot of knowledge. Uh, obviously, we need a lot of research done. We need to coordinate with many uh, scientists, many archaeologists. And so if you really want to get involved, then get involved by helping us out and you'll also learn. Uh, so then uh, uh, Aditya Krishna says, why aren't we taught more about Arya Bhatt, Chanakya, Bhaskaracharya? That's a very good point. I'll club several questions. Kapil Verma says, uh, why isn't ancient history taught in our textbooks and why aren't we proud of it? Pranav Sharma, how can we make young people really proud of their heritage? Gayatri Sivaguru says, why are British rule and other invasions dominating uh, the school textbooks and not our own treasures? Pankaj Sharma says that what we teach is more about French Revolution, American War, Renaissance, uh, you know, all of that stuff. And here we are discovering new things in Cambodia about Hindu culture and people don't know that. Uh, then Manish Oja asks, should India's grand narrative also include our miserable past under Mughal rule? Now that's a controversial thing to say, but I, I don't mind that. I think yes, the answer is yes. And uh, uh, Akash Raviyanandan Ravi says that due to a lot of quackery by some of our scholars, I'm glad he says that, uh, our image is tarnished. So even when we are saying something valid, people don't believe us. And so if we were to stand up and say this is 6,000 years old or 8,000 years old, they laugh at us. And, uh, unless some internationally credible journal publishes it. But those people are not going to publish it. So what do we do? So this is where I think the government can play a role. This is where the Ministry of Culture and HRD can come together and we can create some new journals which are going to be very Swadeshi. We have started a movement called Swadeshi Indology. The Swadeshi Indology movement is a movement to uh, basically uh, bring the Hindu Vedic Drishti to look at all this evidence uh, from a fresh perspective. And uh, uh, we will publish a book every time. We will do videos uh, from Chennai. We will uh, try to live telecast some videos. Uh, we are doing our bit. But you know, the power a government has and the funding they have and the legitimacy and the credibility they have is huge. And this requires re-educating our politicians, re-educating our bureaucrats, re-educating our gurus, re-educating our scholars, because they've all been affected uh, in the last, you know, many decades by some things, uh, by a kind of ideology which is not very correct. Uh, then somebody says, uh, 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 Ridhima Soni and Shashank Shekhar Panda want to know, how do we tell our friends that Mah or Mahabharata and Ramayana are not some myth? And Surendra Reddy says, how do we counter Devdak Patnaik's uh, myth syndrome? So this business that Itihas and Purana are not true, they're val not valid, they're false and they're made up and chauvinistic and all that. You have to hit hard against it. And do not, do not accept a partial compliment. If, a, if somebody comes and says it's all myth, but it is beautiful myth. Okay, it is, it is, it is so nice and uh, elegant and the poetry is so nice, but you know, it's myth ultimately. And don't mind, everybody else also has myth, all these primitive cultures do. You should not accept uh, insincere, dishonest compliments because, because they're meant to undermine you. And so what you can do is, since you are informed about these, th this problem, you should go and talk to your friends. I'm going to give you homework. I'm going to say that every week, each one of you should have at least one conversation with friends, family, somebody, where you take one of these issues, do your homework, whether you talk about Mahindra Parvat, whether you talk about the validation of Itihas in modern uh, archaeology, whatever topic you choose, do your homework so you're not looking like somebody who's just a quack, you know, and, and then argue. Now, you won't win the first time, you won't win the second time, but you will get better and better. As you argue more, you will become better at it. 
and then you will be able to share your uh, your uh, experiences in videos in writings in blogs that is how you become an activist with an intellectual foundation so this is something you all can do aur hamare desh ke liye agar sabse badi ek samaj ki ek man mein ek avashyakta hai to hamari society history conscious honi chahiye itihas ko bhula dene wali samaj vyavastha nahi honi chahiye 